It's interesting how an attacker can take a functionality or a feature of something like a file system with NTFS and leverage or exploit one of those features called alternate data streams to either hide data or maliciously execute code that's hidden courtesy of the file system itself. If we wanted to associate a set of characteristics with a file, attributes such as word count or the author name or access and modification time and so forth, one way of doing that would be to take that data and then associate it with the file, for example, a Word document. And the concept of a fork or an association with that type of data and the original document gives us the ability to set up that association without changing or altering the functionality or the size of the original file itself. So think of it, for example, as file one as the Word document and then file two as the attributes associated with that Word document. So we have an association or a fork between those two files. So from the user's point of view, all they see is file one, but in reality, file two is supplying additional content. And to the untrained eye or to the unsuspecting victim, if we hide data or content or executables as part of that file two, every time the user then runs file one, we can also tuck in the content of file two, which not only could be data, as I mentioned, but it could also be an executable that also runs. And one of the neat things about alternate data streams with NTF file system is that it doesn't take any type of external or third party tools to implement it. So for the demonstration, let's change directory down to the root. Let's make a new folder called hack with MD space HACK and we'll change directories to that folder with the CD space hack command. So far, so good. Next, let's create a text document. And one way of doing that would be to launch notepad or we can just type in echo space and I'm gonna use some quotes and use the text, this is the content in the text file, end quote. Then we'll do a space, a greater than symbol, another space, and the name of the file we wanna create. And for the file name, let's call it sample.txt and press enter. And now if we do a dir and press enter, here we have our 41 byte sample.txt file. Now an example of adding additional content as part of ADS, the alternate data stream, we can type in echo and we're gonna take the text this is the content that is hidden and we'll put that in quotes. We'll put a space, a greater than symbol, another space, and we'll type in sample.txt, but this time we're gonna add a colon and then the name secret.txt and we'll press enter. Now check this out. If we do a DAR and press enter, all the file system is still showing by default here on this Windows 8.1 machine is sample.txt and check it out. It's still 41 bytes, hasn't changed. And the entry for secret.txt isn't even showing in the default directory presentation. Now, if we did a dir space slash r and pressed enter, then it shows the additional content right here, but to the untrained eye, it wouldn't even show up. So if we wanted to load the content of that secret file, we could use a, a text editor like notepad space. And then I'm just gonna highlight by clicking on mark, selecting sample.txt colon secret.txt press enter to copy that and then do a right click and a paste and then we'll press enter. And then notepad brings up the hidden content. So let's take it one step further. How could we hide or associate an executable using NTFS alternate data streams? Well, let's go grab an executable, something simple that we can play with. So to do that, let's open up Internet Explorer on this Windows 8 machine and let's do a search for Windows countdown calculator. And here's one from CNET.com. And again, I'm in a lab environment. This is a test machine. Um, you want to be very careful. You're not going to get anything quote unquote extra as you download software. So with that noted on this test machine, I'm going to download the free countdown timer. It's asking me if I want to run it or save it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run it. It is signed by the publisher, which is a good indicator. We'll click on yes. We'll click on next to continue. And I'm going to browse. I'm going to put in that folder called hack. So I'll select hack, click OK, and then I'm actually gonna put it all in that same folder. I'm not gonna expand it to a separate subfolder. It's all gonna go into hack. I'll click next. It says the folder already exists. Do you wanna continue? I'm gonna say yes. And I don't need it in my start menu, so I'm gonna go ahead and say don't do that and click on next. And I don't need a desktop icon either, so I'll deselect that and click on next. So it'll be installed in C colon backslash hack. We'll click on install. And it's asking if we wanna launch it. I'm gonna go ahead and allow the one checkbox that says launch the free countdown timer, click on finish. And it says the output sound device has not been initialized. <laughs> so with this countdown timer, because I really don't give a hoot if it makes a hoot, uh, pun intended, when the countdown is complete, I'm gonna click on okay, and there's the countdown timer. So we can edit this, let's go ahead and edit. And let's say the future date that we're looking for is a few years in the future. Let's go to 
2030, January 1st, and we'll click on OK. And we'll say uh, Happy 2030, and we'll click on OK. All right, so that's got a few days to go till we get to 2030. Okay, so now that we know that application runs or works, we'll go ahead and let me close that. And let's go back to the command prompt to do a DIR and all the files for the countdown timer should be there. And to make it a little bit easier, I'm gonna go ahead and rename the free countdown timer right here to fct.exe, just so it's a little easier to type. So we'll do a rename free countdown timer.exe. I did a tab to expand that. And we'll rename it fct.exe and press enter. And we'll do a DIR just to verify. Looks great. There it is right there. So now we have an executable that we can play with. Next, let's create another text file and we'll associate additional ADS info associated with the text file. So to create a new text file, we'll do an echo space and in quotes, we'll put in contents of text file, end quote, and we'll use a greater than symbol and let's call it text file .txt and press enter. So now if you do a DIR and press enter, Here's our text file right here of 26 bytes. Next, let's associate ADS info with that text file with the type command, which is one way of exploiting or leveraging the ADS functionality. And we'll type in the folder C colon backslash hack. And we want to associate the countdown timer of fct.exe. And we want to associate that executable as ADS stream information associated with that text file. So we'll add a space, we'll do a greater than symbol, another space. And then we'll specify that text file of text file dot txt colon fct dot exe and we'll press enter and let's use the dir command as well to verify the contents of the folder so here originally the text file is 26 bytes and the text file now still shows 26 bytes although it now has additional information regarding fct dot exe which is referring to the executable that we downloaded now if this was malicious software that we wanted the user to run one way of tricking a user into running it would be to do something like this we can create the equivalent of an alias or an association. And to do that in Windows, we use the mklink command. So we'll type in mklink and let's use cats. Maybe we have a really big cat lover. We'll call it cats.exe space. And then we'll refer to our text file, textfile.txt colon fct.exe. And we'll press enter. So now we have a symbolic link for cats.exe, which is referring to our text file with its associated attributes through ADS. So now if we type in cats, K-A-T-Z, and press enter, <laughs> I get that same pop-up message regarding my audio card hasn't been initialized. We'll click on OK for that, which continues on to the application itself. So if this was malware of some type that we wanted the user to run, we could have several levels of hiding and obfuscation just using the NTFS alternative data streams, which could be used for both hiding the data or the executable, as well as tricking the user into launching something they hadn't intended on launching. In this nugget, we discussed and demonstrated how we can use NTFS alternate data streams to fork or associate data into existing files without changing the original file's attributes or size. And it could be one of several mechanisms that we could use to inject malicious code and have that code be executed on the user system. I'm glad you joined me for this nugget. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.